In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can relieve your stress and anxiety with these two simple breathing techniques. Hi, my name's Laura Evans, helping people like you to unleash their potential in business and life. And if this is the first time that you found me here on YouTube, then please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified every Friday when we release a new video. Is stress and anxiety causing a problem in your life? Well, guess what? I can relate. Many years ago, I suffered with anxiety and depression, and I am so passionate about helping people. There have been various different studies over the years showing the extent of mental health here in the UK. In 2015-16, the Mind Charity predicted that one in four people would suffer with their mental health. So let me tell you a little bit about what I think stress is really all about. And to do that, I bought a prop. Now, what happens is we have a part of our brain called the limbic system, okay? It sits just at the top of your spinal cord, about the size of a walnut. It's the most primitive part of your brain and it controls your flight or fight response. Now, within that, there is something called the amygdala. Now, I want you to imagine that this ball, it represents that part of your brain. Don't worry, I'm not doing a neuroscience lesson. We'll leave that for another day. Um, so just imagine that this ball is gently pulsing away, surveying the horizon, watching out for anything that might be coming your way that you might need to fight or run from. And if it sees a threat coming your way, it peaks, okay? Um, and this is how your response, your fight or flight response kicks off. Now, whether you need to fight it or you need to run from it is obviously instinctively what you'll do in that moment. Now, this part of your brain is really quite primitive and it's there to protect you. And when it peaks and when it expands, if you like, um, then all these hormones get released in your system. Uh, so cortisol, adrenaline, and we'll do another video on those another time. But those get released in your system to protect you. It sends the oxygen to your muscles to make you run and your key organs and it draws uh, blood away from your gut, your digestive system. And this is all this like little reaction. Now, this has been around for a long time. I mean, when you go back to humans living in caves uh, with saber toothed tigers roaming around, um, then obviously we had these big threats that we had to deal with on a regular basis. But the truth of the matter is, we have what I refer to as an inappropriate fight or flight response, where maybe we get an email from the boss, or um, you know, we get uh, an invite to go to the mother-in-laws, or or some other scenario. The kids are screaming, they're arguing. Um, there's just too much to do. You get an email from the boss, and it peaks. Now, when you have chronic stress and uh, anxiety like I used to have, it's almost like this amygdala doesn't go back to its resting state where it's just gently pulsing, watching what's going on in the horizon. It's almost as if it's like half open and it's pulsing half open. And what that means is that it's actually giving a small amount of adrenaline and cortisol into your system all the time. Um, and I used to have what I refer to as an adrenaline hangover on a weekend when I used to be in a really really stressful place because my body would just get fatigued with all of these chemicals in my system and we need a way of getting this amygdala to get back where it needs to be get back i wish it was that easy right telling you what to do sadly it's not but i'm going to give you some tips so welcome to my whiteboard um and here what i'm going to do is draw out for you what i affectionately refer to as my stress bucket now we all have a stress bucket, okay? Now some of us have small buckets, some of us have big buckets, okay? 
but let's just draw a bucket here. Now what happens throughout our day-to-day -day lives um, is that events happen. So for example, we have problems with the kids, the work, emails, life events, money worries, job security money, uh, job security problems. I mean, we could go on and on and on about the challenges that we have in day-to-day -day life, right? Um, and all these things are coming in to our stress bucket, all the things that we find stressful. And let's say your normal stress levels in your bucket are somewhere around here, and all of a sudden you're in a situation where you get unexpected events, when you get unexpected events, we use a different colour, um, then these events actually come on top of what we already experience on a day-to-day -day life. And what happens is our stress levels start to rise and they go up and up and up and the more stress, you know, all these things are all coming in and this stress level is coming up and up and up. Now, some of you will be able to tolerate a lot of stress before it becomes an issue. And some of you will have naturally smaller buckets to start with, and therefore actually your buckets overflow a lot faster um, than other people. When your stress levels get so high, then sometimes what happens is the stress just flows over the top. It is too much. Now the challenge therefore is, regardless of how big or small your stress bucket is, is how are we going to manage it so that these levels don't keep rising? Well there are lots and lots of ways that you can relieve and reduce your stress levels. Now in the case of the bucket here, what I advocate people do is put in what I call stress relieving taps. And the more stress that's coming in the top, the more stress relieving taps you need. And you need tactics, you need things you can do, which you can turn on and off as you need to, in order to make sure this stress level doesn't go too high. So what makes breathing exercises so effective? Well, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that in NLP, we talk about the fact how our thinking, our emotional state and our physiology are all linked. Now, I'm not going to debate here which comes first, but breathing is a physical activity, okay? Um, and that will impact your feelings as will your thinking. So if we can get your breath under control, um, then that's a really, really, really good thing. I mean, come on, if it was that easy for people to say to you, calm down, stop breathing, do you think we would? Big emotions like nerves and anxiety and stress are not as simple as someone just saying, stop doing it. I mean, honestly, listen, if it was that easy, I'd have done it years ago. Now, when we're in a highly stressed state, our prefrontal cortex of our brain is impaired. So our ability to think logically and in a way that we might normally expect just isn't there. So here I've got six different benefits to getting yourself in a good state with deep breathing. I wonder if you can guess what they are. Comment below before I reveal them if you can work out what they are. Um, I'm going to go through them one by one and tell you what I think some of the benefits are of getting really good at controlling your breathing. Number one here is reducing your heart rate. Oh, heart rate oh my goodness sometimes when you get stressed if you like me you can feel your heart pumping away um and it's no good for your heart in the long term it really isn't alongside that is therefore also reducing your blood pressure um getting your heart rate and your blood pressure back under control is good for your health as well as good for your mind and good for your thinking number three Improving your mental health. Oh my goodness, don't we need to do that? Our mental well-being is so important and breathing can really help with that too. Number four, 
better digestion. Now I mentioned earlier that actually when you're in a stressed state, your body pulls away the blood and the oxygen from your digestive system in order to favor your heart and your lungs in case you need to run. Um, but actually, if you can get your uh, limbic response, as we call it, under better control, um, if you suffer with IBS or digestive um, issues, then lots of people say that if they reduce their stress levels, that gets much better for them as well. Can't get this one off. Oops. <laughs> clear your mind. This is the next one. Clear your mind. I've already talked about this. Clear your mind. Clear thinking is much easier. And the number one, number one for me is reducing that stress level, um, really getting that under control. So there's loads and loads and loads of reasons why you want to learn about getting your breath under control. Changing the rhythm of your breathing to that of more slower, deeper, more relaxed breathing is a really good way to hack your brain for it to think that actually you're not actually stressed and actually you're in a much more calm state. It stimulates something called the parasympathetic nervous system easy for me to say. Um, and that essentially is a system that we need to be stimulated in order to give us that calmer, more relaxed feeling. So shall we have a look at the two techniques? So the first breathing exercise we're going to have a look at is what's called box breathing. Um, and it's been around for quite a long time. They use it in the military in America quite a lot to help people to calm themselves and get back that nice thinking process that we all want, that clarity of mind. And it's really, really simple. So all you do is breathe in for a count of four, hold for a count of four, breathe out for a count of four, and hold for a count of four. So essentially what you're doing is breathing in for a count of four, holding for a count of four, breathing out for a count of four, and then holding for a count of four. Hence it's called box breathing. So. Are you ready to give it a go? As long as it's safe to do so, let's do it here right now. Really focus on breathing from your stomach, not your top of your chest, your stomach. Breathe in deep. Imagine in your stomach there is a balloon and imagine you're expanding that balloon to really breathe deeply. Ladies, this is not the time to be worrying about your stomach. Let's do it. So remember, breathe in deep, okay? Deep into your tummy. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. So, breathing in. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathing out. One, two, three, four. And hold. One, two, three, four. Uh, just one word of warning. If you get lightheaded, stop. I generally find that a good thing to do um but if you're not used to breathing deeply seriously um you know you may find you get yourself a little bit lightheaded so just stop but what you'll find is that you much better regulate that breathing when you are anxious and when you are stressed your breathing is going to go all over the shop it'll be irregular patterns it will be high in your chest and so i really want you to focus on that deeper breathing um, down into your stomach. It's a great little technique. Now the second breathing exercise I'd like to share with you today is something called tracing hand. Now I first saw this being used in schools and thought it was absolutely amazing. I've had small children doing this all the way through to senior executives around a board table. Yeah I'm serious. Um, and so it's so easy and I want to teach it to you today. Now do you remember as a small child tracing around your hand on with a pencil? That's essentially what this breathing exercise is. What it does is it regulates that breath. Now I'm gonna hold my hands up to the camera so that you can see it while we do this exercise. However, when you do this, you can just have it in your lap and just be tracing around. Um, and that's how the senior executive got away with it in a board meeting, but that's for another day. Um, so that's what we're gonna do, okay? So you again, you can do this along with me, put your hand out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start here at the base of the hand and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring our finger up the side of our thumb and then we're going to pause at the top then we're going to bring the finger down the other side and then we're going to pause then we're going to bring it up this side and then pause down and pause you get the general gist right um and that's how we're going to regulate our breathing by essentially tracing around our hand so you're ready let's do it so hold your hands out 
and start at the bottom okay so what we're going to do is breathe in as we pull the finger up good pause and breathe out pause and breathe in pause and breathe out pause and breathe in pause and breathe out pause breathe in pause breathe out pause breathe in pause Now you see we're at the base of the hand this side, what we're going to do is exactly the same, we're going to go back the other way. So you ready? Breathing in, pause and out. Remember, breathe deep into your belly, breathing in, pause and out. Good, breathe in, I do it through my nose. Good, pause and out, always through the mouth. Works better, breathing in. Pause and out. Breathing in. Pause and out. I don't know about you, I feel way calmer already. Um, I absolutely love it. So please, if you get stressed or anxious, use one of these exercises. I promise you from personal experience that if you can get your breath back under control, your clarity of thought will come back, you'll start to feel more relaxed and calmer and you'll be able to take on whatever it is that you need to take on in this particular day. Now, I have a small gift for you. Yes, you. Uh, thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. And as a thank you from me to you, what I've done is created a guide for you, which is my 10 ways to reduce your stress today. It's a nine page guide. And if you found these breathing exercises useful, you will love what is in this PDF. I cover for you how to reduce your overwhelm. By the way, check out the video that's there, all there, um, and go and watch a video I did on that. Um, doing something differently is a whole tip around that. Change your state, change your thinking. Look up and smile. Oh my goodness, I need to do a video on that because it's so cool. The pen hack, which I love as well. Uh, the calm down technique. Uh, it's just a mindfulness tool. Works brilliantly. Um, you've then got two breathing exercises. Tracing hand we've done. But there's also another one here called the earth breath, which I think you'll love. End of day techniques and more simple hacks. So please feel free, check the link that's in the description below and go and download your free copy of my 10 ways to reduce your stress levels today. I hope you've really enjoyed this video and if you have please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified when we release the next video next Friday and let me know in the comments have you tried these two breathing exercises and tell me what did it do for you I'm so keen to hear and as you know if you're a regular watcher of ours we always reply to all our comments so please feel free to let us know what you thought and until next time take care